Hi, this is Ryan Zell of the Zell Challenge channel. Recently during a debate, the question came up of how Peter used the keys. The person wanted examples of how Peter used the keys, which he believed the scriptures did not show. The following was my answer. Example one, Acts 1, 15 to 23. For it is written in the book of Psalms, let his habitation be desolate and let no man dwell therein. And his bishopric let another take. Peter stands up and does two things here. First, he interprets scripture for the church. Both Psalm 69 and 109 are quoted. And think about how many times these verses were pondered upon by Jews for the first 1,000 years. Second, he tells the other apostles that he will appoint a successor to Judas's office of bishop. He is the one who Christ appoints to be the holder of the keys of the kingdom of heaven and the one Christ has entrusted to tend, to feed, and to shepherd his flock. Here is where Peter starts this mission. Example 2. Acts 2. On the day of Pentecost, 33 AD, Peter gives the first sermon of the church with power and fire. The Tower of Babel is reversed. 3,000 men come into the one church. Incidentally, this reverses the 3,000 men of the first Exodus in Exodus 32, 25 to 28. Let the children of Levi did according to the word of Moses, and there fell of the people that day about 3,000 men. Example 3. Acts 5, 4, 5, and 9, and 10. And Peter said to Ananias, Why has Satan filled your heart to lie to the Holy Spirit and to keep back some of the price of the land? And then Peter said to her, Why is it that you have agreed together to put the Spirit of the Lord to the test? Behold, the feet of those who have buried your father are at the door, and they will carry you out as well. Acts 5 is where Peter exercises his authority as both shepherd and holder of the keys. He confronts both Ananias and Sapphira in Acts 5. This is because Peter has the keys and speaks with the full authority of our God. By the way, the early church fathers believed that both Ananias and Sapphira were spared from hell. In Acts 6, we will see the formation of of the hierarchy with the church as we proceed through scripture and even outside of the apostolic age as the hierarchy evolves as the church grows to fit its needs. Notice the laying on of hands here. So the twelve summoned the congregation of the disciples and said, it is not desirable for us to neglect the word of God in order to serve tables. These they set before the apostles and they prayed and laid their hands upon them. This is the seed of the diaconate. The ecclesial authority of the church, represented by the keys, begins to form the very visible and physical church with a hierarchy found in the earliest church and even to the present day. The keys which are given to Peter on behalf of the church has this authority to form a hierarchy. If you don't believe Christ wanted his church to have leaders, then erase Hebrews 13, 17, and I quote, Obey your leaders and submit to them. For they keep watch over your souls as those who will give an account. Let them do so with joy and not with grief, for this would be unprofitable for you. Here is a hierarchy of the church, which took a few generations after the apostolic age to come about. Example 4 continues with 1 Corinthians 12, 28. Paul describes the physical and very visible and vibrant church. And God has appointed in the church First apostles, second prophets, third teachers, then workers of miracles, then healers, helpers, administrators, speakers in various kinds of tongues. And in 1 Peter 5 verses 1 to 4, Peter tells us that the shepherds of the one flock have responsibilities. And in verse 4 he states, And when the chief shepherd is manifested, you will obtain the unfading crown of glory. Example 5, the full authority to bind and to loose, Matthew 16, 19. Jesus speaks to Peter in the second person singular, telling him that he will have the full authority of Christ to bind and to loose, and whatever he binds and looses will be honored in heaven. 
Peter accepts the keys of the kingdom of heaven on behalf of the church, which is a metaphor for the ecclesial authority that Christ endowed his church with. Matthew 18, 15, all the apostles will be judges with the authority to bind and loose on matters that will affect the unity of the church. Example 6, Peter is the vicar of Christ. We call the bishop of Rome the vicar of Christ. And this comes from John 21, 15 to 17. And scripture bears this out. I will not read the whole thing except for the ending of each of the verses. Yes, Lord, you know that I love you. He said to him, tend my lambs. He said to him, shepherd my sheep. Jesus said to him, tend my sheep. Peter is the vicar of Christ, meaning he is vicariously Christ, because Christ is now in heaven, awaiting his enemies to be made a footstool. Example 7, John 10, 16. And these are the red letter words of Jesus Christ himself. He tells the apostles, I have other sheep which are not of this fold. I must bring them in also, and they will hear my voice, and they will become one flock with one shepherd. Christ did not bring them in physically himself, but Peter, acting with the full authority of Christ and the one holding the keys of the kingdom of heaven, brings in the very first Gentiles into the church. In Acts 15, 7, Peter says this, After there had been much debate, Peter stood up and said to them, Brethren, you know that in the early days God made a choice among you, that by my mouth the Gentiles would hear the word of the gospel and believe. In conclusion, there is one church, one shepherd, and one flock. Jesus told the apostles he was not leaving them as orphans. He gave his church, and only his church, his one church, the paraclete, to guide this thing he called my church into all truth. The Holy Spirit doesn't just jump ship to ship. Christ is our good shepherd, Christ is our rock of rocks, and Christ is our foundation of foundations. Christ left us a church in which to encounter him. He left Peter as the shepherd while he, Christ, is in heaven interceding for us. Luke 10, 16, Jesus says to the apostles, The one who listens to you listens to me. And the one who rejects you rejects me. And he who rejects me rejects the one who sent me. Christ left Peter and the apostles to represent him here on earth. We are to listen to the apostles as if Christ himself were speaking. And not just any church. Which is the church found in Scripture? Scripture proves it to be the Catholic Church located throughout the world and having the ecclesial authority located in Rome where the keys were handed down by the Apostle Peter to a successor bishop. Blessings and consider joining the Zell Challenge channel. Blessings to all.